Good day everyone. Today we will be discussing about basic concepts of hypothesis testing. So this is the first topic for fourth quarter period in statistics and probability. So this topic is also vital since this has in connection with your practical research to subject or your quantitative research. So let's start with the terminologies. First, what is a hypothesis? So once you said the hypothesis, it is a tentative statement or explanation of a phenomenon. It is a conjecture or assertion about a parameter. So it implies that once you said hypothesis, we're dealing with the educational guess. It implies that we're having an assumption of what really what will really happen or what will be the result of the given problem or what will be the result on our study. So it's either we're going to reject or accept the, our hypothesis. So there are two types of hypothesis. The first one is the null hypothesis. So once you said null hypothesis, it is a statement that there is no difference between a parameter and a specific value. So once you said parameter, we can say that we can have mu. And a specific value, it can be, for instance, we have 8. So once you said null hypothesis, we're always using equals. Because just always remember there is no difference. So since there is no difference, we're dealing with equals. So therefore, we have mu equals 8. A parameter which is mu equals a specific value. So that is a representation for a null hypothesis. So but once you said alternative hypothesis, there exists a difference. So since there exists a difference between a parameter and a specific value, it's either the parameter is greater than a specific value, the parameter is less than a specific value, or the parameter is not equal to a specific value. So we have three symbols. It's either greater than, less than, or not equal if we're dealing with alternative hypotheses. So for instance, I have a problem which is the mean age of grade 11 Hume students is is 16 years old. So kung, if this is 16 years old, automatic, if we're going to identify the parameter, the parameter is mean, which is mu, is, it implies equals 16. So we just simply use is, which is equal 16. Now, if we're going to find or identify the null hypothesis, we denote h of o for null and h of a for alternative. So if we're going to find the null hypothesis for mu equals 16, it will be also mu equals 16 because null hypothesis states that there is no difference between a parameter and a specific value. Like what I told you, null hypothesis is always equals or has always equal sign. Now for alternative hypothesis, we're going to have, since there are three symbols, we're going to choose not equal if the given is equal. So therefore, we have mu is not equal to 16. So that will be your representation for parameter, null hypothesis, and alternative hypothesis. And what are you, how, um, when are you going to use the greater than and less than? Let's have an example. Let's erase this one. And then let's have another example. For instance, our example is the average time. Or let's say the average grade of STEM students is 89. It's less than 89. Let's ch change this. It's less than 89. So if we're going to write the parameter, we're going to deal with the problem. The average, which is mu is less than, automatic, it will be less than, and that's value or specific value, which is 89. So we have mu less than 89. So now to identify h of o and h of a, to make it h of o or null hypothesis, the param it will become mu equals 89. So for alternative hypothesis, it will become mu less than 89. We will just simply copy the parameter because the parameter indicates less than. So, and that is alternative hypothesis. So, therefore, we're going to copy 
and that will be mu is less than 89. So that is the way on how are you going to represent a parameter, a null hypothesis, and an alternative hypothesis. Let's now have the next terminology. We have two types of alternative hypothesis. The alternative, if the alternative hypothesis is expressed using not equal, then that is two-tailed or non-directional. So it implies you're going to take a look on alternative hypothesis, and if it is not equal, automatic it will be two-tailed or non-directional. If you're going to represent a normal curve, this will be the representation or illustration of this alternative hypothesis, type of alternative hypothesis. And then we're going to have this one and this one. So this is what we call the rejection region. And we will be discussing that next week. And this is the acceptance region. Okay. So this is what we call a representation or illustration of a two-tailed or non-directional alternative hypothesis. And that, and you're going to identify or know or determine if it is two-tailed if the alternative hypothesis is not equal. However, if the alternative hypothesis is greater than or less than, then it is one-tailed or directional. For instance, if it is greater than, a representation or illustration of your normal curve will be this one and this one. So this, the shaded part, just always remember that's your rejection region. And the, this one is what they call your acceptance region. Okay, and if it is less than, you're going to have the shaded part to the left. So this is your rejection region and the acceptance region. So if it is greater than, this will be your representation for the normal curve. And if it is less than, this is your illustration or representation for the normal curve. So just always remember, if the alternative hypothesis is greater than or less than, automatic we're dealing with one field or directional. But if it is... Um, not equal, automatic, we're dealing with two-tailed or non-directional. Let's now have the type 1 and type 2 error. For type 1 error, it is committed when the null hypothesis is rejected when it is true. However, once, once you said a type 2 error, it is committed when the null hypothesis is accepted when it is false. So, we have what we call, we're dealing with the null hypothesis here in the type 1 and type 2 error. But, just always remember, you're going to deal with the type 1 error if you have the null hypothesis and you reject this one, even it is true. But, if the null hypothesis is being accepted, even it is false, automatic that will be a type 2 error. We also have what we call the level of significance. The level of significance is the probability of committing type 1 error. You already know the level of significance because... We already discussed this in confidence interval estimation and appropriate sample size. So for instance, let's have a review. So in order for us to have uh, level of significance, for instance, we have confidence level of 90%. So therefore, the alpha value or the level of significance, just always remember, a representation for level of significance is an alpha value. So our alpha value is equal to 0 0.10. Why? Because 100 minus 90 is 10%, transforming that into decimal, it will be 0 0.10. If we're going to represent or illustrate this using a normal curve, this can be a representation. It can be, this is the 0 0.10, and this is the 90%. Or maybe this is the 10%, and this is the 90%. Okay? So let's now have a problem. For a problem, a study claims that the mean survival time for a certain cancer patient related, uh, treated immediately with chem chemotherapy and radiation is 24 months. The observation is done among 22 cancer patients with 98% confidence level. So it is clear that the study claims that the mean survival time is what? 24. So therefore, if we're going to write the parameter, we have mu equals 24. Now, if we're going to represent this using null hypothesis, we already discussed, so it will be mu equals 24. For alternative hypothesis, it will be mu is not equal to 24. Why is it not equal? Because our given is equal for our parameter. 
and represents to the number of cancer patients or the number of persons involved in the given problem. As you can see, we have 22 cancer patients. So therefore, our n is equal to 22. Now, are we going to deal with t or z? Of course, we're going to deal with t value. It means this is the appropriate test statistic that we're going to use on our problem. Why is it t value? Just always remember, if sigma is unknown, and n is less than or equal to 30, automatic that we're going to use t value. Since 22 is less than 30, automatic we're going to use t value. Now, for the type of test, we're going to identify if it is one-tailed or two-tailed. So as you can see, since it is not equal, since this is not equal, automatic we're dealing with two-tailed. Just always remember, there are two types of tests, two-tailed and one-tailed. It will be two-tailed if the null hypothesis or the alternative hypothesis is not equal. It will only be a, a one-tailed if the alternative hypothesis is greater than or less than. Okay, now let's now identify the confidence level, alpha value, and the given critical value. For confidence level, what are we going to do? We're going to take a look on our um, problem. So based on our problem, our confidence level is 98%. Now for alpha value or our level of significance, we already know that it will be 100 minus 98, which is 2%. Transforming that into decimal, it will be 0 0.02. So based on our problem, we're dealing with T value. So we are going to use the T value. So to find the T value, we're going to, let's check again, our n is equal to 22. So therefore, to find DF, that's n minus 1, so our DF is 21. So let's now have 21 here. Now our alpha value is 0 0.02. However, we're going to check if we're dealing with one-tailed or two-tailed. So based on our problem, we're dealing with two-tailed. And then we're going to have have 0 0.02. So therefore, having this one, we're going to check we have 2.518. So therefore, critical value is 2.518. So if, if that is 2.518, we're going to check. So just always remember, if we're dealing with positive negative, we are going to have positive negative critical value if we have not equal. It will be positive if the given alternative hypothesis is greater than and it will be negative if the given alternative hypothesis is less than. Based on our problem, we're dealing with not equal for alternative hypothesis. So therefore, we're going to use positive negative. So therefore, we have critical value which is positive negative 2.518. Let's try another example. Number two, a researcher claims that the mean monthly consumption of coffee per person is less than 19 cups. So as you can see, we have new less than 19. Now for your null hypothesis, you, you always or you all know that once the null hypothesis, that's always equal. So we have new equals 19. For alternative hypothesis, you already know that we just simply copy the parameter because the given parameter deals on alternative hypothesis. So therefore, we have new less than 19. Now, how many person are involved in the given problem? As we can see, we're dealing with 60. So we're going to have n is equal to 60. Now, are we dealing with t or z? Of course, we're dealing with c since 60 is greater than 30. And at the same time, the population standard deviation is given. Now, the type of test, as you can see, since our alternative hypothesis is less than, automatic, we're dealing with one tilde. Okay? Okay, so we're done with this one. Now, let's identify the given um, confidence level, alpha value, and critical value. So, for confidence level, as we'll take a look on the problem, our confidence level is 99%. So, therefore, our alpha is 0 0.01. Now, to find the critical value, to find the critical values at the since we're dealing with C, automatic, we're going to take a look on the bottom part of the table. 
And then we're dealing with one tailed. So automatic, this is, is the one tailed. And our alpha value is 0 0.01, this one. So taking a look on this one, so we're dealing with 2.326. So we're dealing with 2.326. However, just always remember my the given condition, if it is positive, negative for um, alternative hypothesis, it will be, uh, if it is not equal, we're going to use positive, negative. If it is greater than, we're going to use positive. If it is less than, we're going to use negative. So, we take a look on the given problem, we're dealing with less than. Since we're dealing with less than, automatic, the critical value is negative 2.326. Okay, let's now try another example. For problem number three, a car dealer claims that the average price of Honda Vios is at least 662000 A client suspected that the claim is incorrect and found that random sample of 15 similar vehicles is the mean price of 640000 in standard deviation of 24000 Is there enough evidence to reject the dealer's claim at Alpha 0 0.05? Let's start with the parameters. The parameter deals on the claim of at least 662,000. So therefore, we're going to have mu greater than or equal to 662,000. Just always remember, once you said at least, we have greater than or equal. And if it is at most, that is less than or equal. Okay? For null hypothesis, so it is always equal. So therefore, we have mu equal 662,000. For alternative hypothesis, we have mu is greater than 662,000. So we have parameter, alternative um, null hypothesis, and alternative hypothesis. Now for n, we're going to have or check how many persons or how many um, cars are involved in the given problem. As you can see, the number of cars involved in the problem is 15. So we have 15. Since it is less than 30, automatic, we're going to use critical T value. And the type of test, since we have greater than, we're going to have two tail. Okay, so we are going to use two tail. Now let's now identify the confidence level, the alpha, and the critical so for confidence level, since our alpha value is equal to 0 0.05, as can be seen on the given problem, our confidence level is 95%. So let's now identify the critical value. Since we're dealing with T, we're going to have N, which is 15. So our DF is equal to 14. So we're going to use 14. And then we're dealing with one tail. And the alpha value is 0 0.05, so this is the alpha value. So therefore, our critical value is 1.761. Now, since we're dealing with 1.761, just always take a look on alternative hypothesis. Our alternative hypothesis is not, is greater than. Since we're dealing with greater than an alternative hypothesis, we're dealing with positive 1.761. So therefore, our critical value is 1.7. Six one. So that's all for today's discussion. Thank you and God bless everyone. So don't forget to hit the notification bell button so that you're going to be updated with our video tutorial. So that's all. Thank you and God bless again.